Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm gonna sing you a song. <clears throat> it's a cover song, but I, it's not. It's not the actual song, so it's kind of my own version of it. It's kind of made up. Or cares. Ready? Okay, ready? Go. There. <laughs> Keys pop or left that still work because some of the keys don't work now. <laughs> some of the keys stop working. Oh, and still try to fix it. I still try to fix it. Oh, okay, ready? All right. Okay, I'm gonna sing your song. Okay, ready? Go. <laughs>
fog yourself over. <laughs> Thank you, John Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For being a junkie wife beater. <laughs> How many times have you read lyrics for shit where you're like, where you're actually reading the lyrics and not like reciting the song in your head or whatever? You realize, fuck, man, this is some misogynistic bullshit. Like all the early Beatles entire catalog, it's all about beating your girlfriend every time she wants to step out without you. <laughs> Whether or not she even cheated on you, I don't know. It's just going out the door without your permission, boof! Yeah, beat her up! <laughs> it's like, fuck that shit, dude. Like, that's why I love reading lyrics. That's why I love bands that write their lyrics on their shit, right? Because, like, some, especially metal bands, because you can't understand that without reading the lyrics. <laughs> and I, uh, like, this tattoo, for example, is a lyric I read in a metal band's thing. And, uh, yeah, I never would have known that's what they said. Uh, but, and it says, uh, well, I actually kind of fucked it up a little because I reversed a little bit of it. But I wrote it as, speak to me not of justice, for none have I ever seen. When the actual line is, speak not to me of justice. None have I ever seen. But I like it when people talk to me, so I changed it around a little bit. <laughs> you know. Anyway, it's six and a half dozen, one or the other. How's it going? It's my birthday tomorrow. It's my birthday. So I'm, maybe, I'm doing whatever I feel like doing, bitches. <laughs> do what I want. You can't tell me what to do. I do what I want. Let's see. I just got out of bed very recently. <laughs> After a long night of having uh, people on the street propping all their shit up against my wall, which is right next, like, three inches from my head, and talking very loudly, and building things, or whatever the fuck they do on the street, <laughs> as we are on the street, so, you know, I just had to play shit really loudly, and then they left eventually, but, yeah, it's life in, this, life in the big city, buddy, Whew, gotta stay flexible at all times, you never know, you never know who, what, which cops are gonna come and decide to dump their entire bad day on you, just because they want to yell at somebody, and they don't have anybody to yell at, so they just come you know, find somebody in a van and just start yelling at them. <laughs> they do that. Or the opposite happens, which is what happened to me the other day because I was uh, at uh, Tire Beach with Sadie. And I was just walking my dog, you know, like anybody else in the city, any other taxpayer in the city would, you know, walking my dog. But because I'm in a big truck, the cops came over and they're like, you can't stay. I was like, I'm just walking my dog, dude. I've literally only been there like enough time to walk the dog. <laughs> and, uh, like, uh, people in vans. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a taxpayer. Yeah, fucking... I'm just like everybody else in these Teslas. It's just I'm in a different vehicle. And he's like, well, you know, the hubba you hubba 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 And he started exp uh, cop-splaining to me all this. Port Authority. <laughs> cop And I was like, yeah, that's cool. And he, and he kept trying to explain it. I was like, it's cool. Yeah, the end result is the same. I have to leave. <laughs> so, you know, that doesn't... You don't need to see, You don't need to give me all this information because I'm already triggered, you know, by the you have to leave here fucking thing. But, strangely enough, I, di I disarmed that one a few years ago so it doesn't actually send me until I... I used to, like, for three days just feel like the biggest piece of shit on the planet every time I got Karen by anyone ever. You know, they would be like, you know, 
So, I was so just like, oh, I'm a big piece of shit. I don't belong anywhere. I should just die for like three days every single time I got Karen. And it was exhausting because <laughs> I've been living in a truck for like nine, nine years now going on ten. And now I find, you know, once I recognized that that was the trigger that was like sending me into like a three day spiral of pure and utter self-hating depression, if I got Karen, then I just had to like, you know, really every time it happened, just pay super close attention to how my body would start. <gasps> yeah, exactly. Rejection sensitive dysphoria. That's right. And nervous system goes haywire instantly. But yeah, now that I know how to re-regulate the nervous system, I can, I can shut that shit down within 30 seconds now before I spend three days trying to kill myself. So all you gotta do is take it, well first, it, like if you don't have any, like if you're driving or whatever, all you have to do is just take a deep breath and then breathe in a little bit more on top of that because once you fill your lungs up to that capacity, it sends a signal to your vagal nervous nerve that you can, that you're safe. Not just, not just breathing heavily a bit, extra one on top. It'll, it'll instantly make the brain go, oh, we're cool. And then it like your nervous system instantly grounds. Uh, that's the super quick way to do it. You know, you can do the whole left. You can move your eyes all the way to the right for 30 seconds. Move your eyes all the way to the left for 30 seconds. That one also resets your vagal nerve. Or anything that involves a, a large yawn or sigh means you're resetting your... And for dogs, apparently, when they, you know, when they when their hackles raise and they're around another dog they're not sure about or whatever, and then after they decide, okay, we're cool with each other, they always go like, they shake. And that's dogs resetting their ner their vagal system when they're when there's no panic, right? There's no trouble. And they don't have to get in a fight. They just dis disarm that. So that's why, like, every time you, you know, like right now, she's kind of like, I want to go outside. I'm fucking sick of this shit. What's mommy talking to her phone for? Why are we outside playing? I want to play. Why, who do you as soon as I open the door, she's going to jump off the bed and shake, shake all that shit off. Yeah, that's what they do. That's what they do. Dogs are amazing. Yeah, animals. Amazing. They have all the same feelings we do, if not more of them. Because, you know, like whales, they have six times more feelings than we do. <laughs> Woo! They're amazing. It's probably the most advanced creature on this planet. It ain't got nothing to do with human beings. We're just like, we're a fucking piece of shit. We're like, uh, we're, we're fucking assholes. We're the fucking assholes of the planet. <laughs> yeah, the trees, the trees, the whales, all those, all those other uh, living organisms are way more advanced than we are. <laughs> we should just admit it. <laughs> as soon as you embrace that fact, then maybe the scientific community can embrace the fact that, uh, the... Einstein's special theory of relativity had a lot more to do with his wife and her dreams and her ideas than it had to do with him. So every time they start going, you know, Einstein, oh, he's so smart. Oh, like, yeah, he's so smart that he took his wife's ideas, stole them from her, published them with her initially, had her whitewashed off of everything, decided he didn't need to be with her now that he's super famous off of her idea. So he leaves her. Uh, with their son, who was schizophrenic and got committed to an institution, he leaves her to go marry his, like, what, 12-year-old cousin or whatever, and then become super rich and famous, and then I never have to deal with my old wife again, fuck her, and then she ends up getting herself committed so that she can be near her son for the rest of her life and dies penniless in an insane asylum, the woman who came up with the idea of special relativity, so put that in your hat. <laughs> Put that in your gravity hat. <laughs> so every time, every fucking time they say anything, <laughs> you rich. Uh, uh, what, what's all this? Oh my god, what are you doing? What's going on? Uh, yeah, every time anybody starts like spouting off the, the wonderfulness of Einstein, I'm all like, hello, Maleva Merrick. Her name's Maleva Merrick. Merrick. Maleva Merrick. <laughs> yeah, went to school for astro, uh, one of the first uh, astro, well, of course, she was the only woman in the entire university uh, there back in the 1800s, of course, you know, like, oh my god, can you imagine? You're like, it takes you an extra hour to put on your big fucking corset, your big puffy sleeves and walk around like, oh, I can't breathe going up the stairs or <laughs> the big dress. <laughs> oh my god, what a pain in the ass. Anyway, uh, that's why they invented pants for women, so they could start riding bicycles, I just, I thought. Okay, so yeah, it's my birthday. Woo! Tomorrow's my birthday. But I have a tendency to celebrate it all month long, because then if I know it's my birthday, I'm a lot nicer to myself, and I do stuff I actually want to do instead of doing stuff that I don't really want to do. <laughs> 
like for other people and stuff like abandoning myself you know to satisfy other people all that kind of shit you know that gets thrown out the window all october so yeah i decided uh i might have to start pretending every single month is my birthday month <laughs> so that i stop performing those types of things out in public on a regular basis you know always abandoning yourself for the, for the pleasure of others or whatever yeah no that shit no i'm over all that shit <laughs> So yeah, uh, but it, it but ever since getting uh, disowned, it, it's been sort of a regular scenario that about the week, couple weeks before my birthday, I start getting some seriously like gnarly vibes start coming my way, and I always kind of feel like it's probably coming from yeah the, the people who birthed me. It's, it feels really like uh, you know, or it's just like a reactivation of the mother and father wounds as we all carry. You know how everybody has like a specific type of wound. Like there's a witch wound. Also I had that one. Whoa, and a what's the other one? There's a mother wound, a father wound, a witch wound, and there's also some people have a, an impersonator or an imposter wound, which is part of an identity wound, all connected to the Chiron thing that's happening in space right now. Oh my god. Yeah. So identity wounds in general really deep really difficult to dismantle because they're so embedded in your subconscious for example my identity wound was so deep you know whenever whenever i'd read this shit online about like oh with your trauma blah 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 how to heal it and all this shit which is what i've been doing for 10 years sitting in this truck being a homeless piece of shit <laughs> doing all my shadow work and healing all my shit so that I can help other people out there who also have trauma. It's not all about me and my trauma. It's like how to fucking fix that shit, duh. Because I was like 45 years old, still having abusive relationships, boyfriends that wouldn't uh, fucking grow a pair of set of balls and fucking off me because that's what I really wanted. <laughs> you know, and they, uh, as soon as I get up in their face about it, like, you uh, I'm going to kill you. I'd be like, go the fuck ahead. You know, they never would. They always run away because I'm uh, afraid of death. And I was like, God damn it. And I was like, okay, so this is clearly not working out. Me trying to have relationships. This is clearly not working out. <laughs> so that's what I decided to embrace hopelessness, as the Buddhists say. And look at everything, like, from right here. No hope. Hope is stupid. Hope is just putting yourself in a different time zone. So just stick with what's right here, right now. Like, and make it be okay. And like, this is totally cool and, I, and as soon as you do that as soon as you accept the hopelessness like i had to at that point i had to embrace the hopelessness that i was never going to be in another relationship again and i was going to spend the rest of my life alone and as soon as i held that and i looked at it i was like oh that's not so bad that's way better than getting beat up by some secretly gay dick <laughs> you know who's like eating all my food not helping me pay the rent <laughs> and snoring in his sleep all night long so i don't get any sleep and kicking me out of bed, uh, you know, all the things that happened. So uh, I was, it was great news. I was like, yeah, that's actually, okay, that, that does sound good. That sounds very peaceful. I like that idea. And as soon as you embrace it, then you're not scared of it anymore. So, yeah, it's been 13 years I've not really been, you know, engaging. I've, I've tiptoed it close, closer in sometimes, you know, since having Sadie has been so helpful in that regard. So I don't feel complete. I mean, yes, I've been very lonely at times especially in portland i went through ooh, that's some gnarly i had to go through some gnarly shit up there alone in the rain ugh, it was not good it was not a good time so i'm really happy to be back down here in uh, san francisco where i'm not gonna sweat or freeze to death in my truck although it has been getting hotter than it used to be of course Shh. anyway yeah, so the uh, witch rune and the imposter rune, the mother rune, so that, that shit always seems to come around same time of year, you know, right before I'm about to be born. <laughs> right about the time my mom's going, oh, God damn, I don't want to have, I don't want to have this baby, <laughs> like, or whatever, but it's too late now, I have to squeeze it out. And I'm going, get me the fuck out of here, I want out of here, all this fucking toxins, Ugh, get me out of here, she hates me already. <laughs> like, I, it's like I already knew my mom hated me before I was even born. <laughs> Because I remember being born. I know that doesn't sound very... Yeah, that's pretty witchy-woo-woo for a lot of people. But yeah, no, I totally remember being born. And that's why I hated the color. This color, light blue, you know? The color in hospitals. I hated this color for years. I had no... Oh, it's actually more like this color. It's paler. Yeah. Anyway, I hated that color for years. 
in pink. I hate that color too. I just, I just hated those colors. Because I will, like, you know, at one point during a lucid dream, I, like, re re-dreamt. Well, it's not really a dream because it's, like, a memory. I just re- I re-had the memory of being born. I was like, ew. That was pretty gnarly. But I was glad to be out. <laughs> That's, that's what she always used to tell me. You couldn't wait to get out of me. I was like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, we're done here. <laughs> I just got to get through the next 20 years. And then as soon as I'm past that point, then it's all about spending another 20 years experiencing my own self as a uh, fucking shut down version of, you know, puppet on a string, uh, you know, acting out of the fucking first 20 years worth of bullshit I was programmed with. And then the next 20 years, healing all the fucking bullshit that the first 20 years programmed me with, and all the second 20 years fucking uh, instinct that I did, shit I did, without even realizing what I, realizing what I was doing. And so, there you go. <laughs> yes. Everything is black now. I finally finished my ceiling yesterday, which was so painful. Yeah, this is why painters get... This is why when you join a painting crew and you're like the new kid on the block, they they go to lunch and leave you to paint the ceiling because the, the fucking ceiling is the worst. Fuck it. Oh, it's so painful. And your neck is just like, ow. When you're done, you're like, ow, ow. <laughs> so, yeah, I finished my ceiling. And hopefully I will get that done and the skylights reseal before the rain comes, which is probably on its way within the next week or two. You know, because I don't want to fucking be drowning inside here with mold ever again. I just, I can't go through that again. If, probably the worst things that have happened in this truck, well, besides the mice, we you know, once a mouse, once one mouse comes in, you're all, oh, what, you little mouse, so cute. Yeah, I called him Mousy Tongue was the name of the mouse that lived here first time. But he turned into like 20 mice <laughs> within like a month or something, you know, like the second time. Uh, when I was in Portland, again, I had another tiny little mouse come in, and then he made a whole family, you know, so cleaning up after a mouse invasion is never any fun, but at least it's over now, and that's why I have to keep moving around, like, I don't like parking anymore more than, like, a day or two, because, you know, you keep your engine running, then, then they don't fucking move in, you know? Just saying. I'm just saying. It's, it's better to keep the show on the road anyway. I don't like being anywhere for very long, because then people start fucking just knowing you're there. This is no fun. <laughs> it's exciting. Show on the road. Keep, keep the show on the road. <laughs> okay. So, I'm gonna release you of your fucking agony and take Sadie for a walk. And, uh, you know, that's all I have to say about it. Thanks for hanging out with me today. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. I'm old now. Hey, guess what? If I make it, if I make it through today without killing myself, <laughs> If I make it through today and tomorrow without killing myself, then that means I have successfully passed through the threshold that a large, huge number of women have to go through uh, during men a pause, or like, as I like to call it, men on pause. <laughs> Because of the changes and because they're so severe and they're like uh, everywhere and oh my god it crazy making bullshit that happens to your body and your brain a lot of women end up killing themselves between the ages of 50 and 55 most because and also because society tells you well you're old looking now so now that you look old you're fucking worthless to us because you're no longer fuckable or whatever and uh i couldn't give less of a fuck about that <laughs> in fact <laughs> I wish I had all those years back that I wasted trying to please men suck dick all the fucking time. I was so over it. Because I was like sucking dick in every metaphorical way I could be. Even when I wasn't sucking dick, I was still sucking dick in some way by getting paid not, what, half of what I should have been getting paid. All that shit, you know, fuck all that shit. So yeah, now that I'm a crony lady, I am officially in my crone time. I have now passed through the suicide portal and can begin living again now that you know i'm not going to be having hot flashes constantly and all the fucking crazy making bipolar bullshit is is, is you know it's been sorted trauma's been healed identity wounds have been patched up they're all like okay fine we're okay with you now <laughs> i don't own a gun <laughs> you know 
things like that. But don't tell anybody, because I threaten them with it all the time out there when they try to rob me or whatever. They roll the door up, and then they see the second set of doors, and they get really confused because they think it's all going to be TVs in here or whatever. And I'm all like, I have PTSD, and I will shoot you in the face. <laughs> and then they be ready. Right away, scared. <laughs> and Sadie will bark, and then she barks. Like, the only time I ever hear her bark. And she sounds pretty threatening when she wants to do this. Good job. All right. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> yes, people do suck. I, I, I don't know. You know, some of, them, some of them don't. You'd be surprised how many people don't suck, actually. Um, like, when I've been driving around on the highway across America, you know, there, there have been times when I was, like, in fucking severe dire straits. And, like, random truck driver would come and fucking save my goddamn life. Even though I didn't even want to live anymore. <laughs> but, most of the time, it was truck drivers. Um, they're fucking awesome people, and I wish they didn't get such a bad rap. And I also wish that they weren't being replaced by fucking stupid self-driving trucks, because that's... <laughs> that's actually... Oh, I have an idea. Let's make, like, a giant tank that can kill tons of people, like, just drive around all the time. <laughs> Great idea. Because you, you, one thing that's not being taken into account is, oh, there she goes, she's ready to go. One thing that's not being taken into account when they do the whole self-driving truck thing is that truckers are actually the reason why more people don't die on the highways. Because they have a collective mind, because they're driving with so much weight and they're basically like, you know, uh, a bomb on wheels when they're driving around. It's a much more collective kind of thinking than you and your tiny little car is because they have to take a bunch more shit into consideration when they're driving. So they're all and being in communication with other truckers, etc. So they're like basically the mama bears on the highway more so than the serial killers. So shut up about that shit. Uh, you know, they're fucking the most awesome people I've met probably at all in the last like 10, 15 years of big truckers. Yeah, I spend so much time alone, they, you know, they got a lot of shit that they've sorted out for themselves. And, you know, they're doing something that's so necessary, and they spend so much time alone in that state of constant zen-like presence. So they're really like the new monks of our society, since we don't have very many monks in our American society. Truckers are the monks. <laughs> and, you know, because they'll do things as well as, like start to slow down or block cars or whatever if they can see that there's some shit happening up there that the people in the cars don't see then we need to fight your yeah 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 honk 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 you know and they'll be like oh there was a big crash and this guy was actually pulling out into my lane so that i wouldn't go speeding into the fucking giant pile up right there you know so they're doing that kind of shit on a regular basis and people just do not give them enough credit and a machine is never going to do that. You know, I really don't think a self-driving truck is going to take that kind of shit into consideration. They're just going to be all, like, money, profit. You know, they're not going to think about... Anyway, oh, truckers, they're awesome. When I was six, I wanted to be... That's all I wanted to do. I grow up and be a trucker. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> so it's kind of cool that I just spend a lot of time driving a truck around. <laughs> you know. Okay, all right, Sadie. Okay, all right, I see you. I see you. I know you want to go outside. Okay, so we're going to go outside now. Um, thank you for joining me on my birthday. That's pretty rad. Uh, yeah, no, Florida, I don't want to talk about driving in Florida at all, because I, I am uh, going to announce officially Florida has the craziest drivers of every of the 50 states. Well, except for Alaska. It's the only one I haven't been to. Anywhere. Florida. Worst drivers ever. They're either on coke or they're on heroin. <laughs> or they're cops and they're just as dangerous. Jesus, fuck, I almost got killed by a cop when I was driving in Florida. Because somebody was trying to, like, out-zoom out the cop, you know? So the guy went, zoom around, and then the cop went, zoom around, and but the cop was not doing as well as the guy was, and he just pretty much almost rammed right into me. This is why it's good to drive an actual pre- uh, plasticky marshmallows because now the steel that we get nowadays is like a marshmallowy steel that's why like you turn the screw a couple times and now all of a sudden it doesn't have rivets anymore and it just goes <laughs> it just turns into like mush because <laughs> it's not real steel anymore because it's been filled with all these other ingredients besides steel <laughs> but this truck because it's older it's actually made of steel steel like real steel so when 
you know, people hit me, because people hit me all the fucking time. They're always running into me, as if I, you can't see me, I'm a giant truck. But I've had people run into me, and their entire front end is just missing. And I don't even have a dent on me, because I'm a big box made of steel. <laughs> They're like marshmallow. They're like marshmallow and fiberglass, you know. So that's good. Uh, I don't know why I got on that subject. Anyway, yeah, Florida, I don't know. You know, I really wish you lived a lot closer, dude. Because <laughs> you're like one of my older friends. You and Kelly, because you're both in Florida. I really wish both of you were not in Florida. So that we can live much closer. Because you guys are like, oh. You know what I mean? And I just wish we could hang out way more often. Because there's so much shit I never have to explain to you. I like, oh, halfway through a sentence, and you're like, yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? Because here... I mean, I'll be talking to people sometimes, and they just are like, they have no, uh, you know, anyway. I'm not going there, though. Fuck that. I am not going to Florida. Fuck Florida. I literally, like, of all the places in the entire Americas, it was, like, one of my least favorite places of all of them. There's just nothing that I like about that place. I just can't do it. No, no way. No way. <laughs> no way. Uh, if I were going to live in another state, if I were going to move again, well, I probably will anyway. I mean, I have to go, um, I'm going to have to go to the southwest over by Monument Valley. I'm going to be going over to Monument Valley area pretty soon. Once I get to the point where I have to change my plates again, which is in about a year. So I'm going to go there. Uh, also, depending on what happens with the election, because... I got my passport, just in case. I was in a big rush to get my passport, just in case. <laughs> so now I got my passport, just in case. But, you know, I was thinking of Denmark. I have a friend in Denmark. I might go visit him. Uh, I also have to go to Germany to get my birth certificate, is my excuse, for getting the fuck out of this country. <laughs> but, you know, how am I going to do that? I'm unemployed. I have no money. By magic, that's how I'm going to do it. Magical! It's going to be magical! <laughs> Mark my words, magic. <laughs> I'll fly there on my broom. <laughs> yes uh, I don't know I don't know what I'm going to do I don't know. I'm not going to make any plans Apparently I can't even make a plan that's like a week away Without it getting all fucked up anyway So like you know I had plans when I, when I quit my job I had plans To uh, get this other job that didn't work out I had plans to fucking work for TaskRabbit Now they're not hiring people anymore That didn't work out I had plans to do some other kind of like house painting gigs on, you know, like gig economy or whatever with Lyft or plans, 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 and nothing ever worked out. So I was just like, okay, well, maybe I'll uh, have to figure something else out. And that's what I'm doing right now as we speak. But I'm going to finish painting my house first because I'm just going to do one project at a time. <laughs> and it's almost done. So you can see everything is black now. Yes. Oh, it's so nice. Because at night, it's literally like there are no walls. Like, just, if I had some glow-in-the-dark paint, I'd probably put, little, like, the entire universe <laughs> at night. Oh, that'd be so cool. But, <clears throat> yeah, something along those lines. I don't know. We're going to work on it. But, yeah, it's great. I already love it. It's so much better. It, and that, I've been staring up here where all Oregon, like, leaked through everything and just brought down most of the ceiling. So it was all kind of like, Wah, like, straggling, Wah, hanging off there. And every day I'd look up at it and I would get angry and depressed and sad and just be like, Ugh. So finally, that's done. It's done. And mostly it's just because, you know, when I lay here and I'm looking up at the ceiling, see? It's like you don't see big straggly fucking growth, just a fly and some smoke. <laughs> it's like a nice clean line. Oh. Oh, it's so satisfying. And the spider, as she eats all the flies that get stuck in her web. Yes, and she's about to eat that one as soon as he goes over a little bit. For the, Yes, I watched her eating. I watched her eating one yesterday. It was pretty rad. Yeah. She, she was on that shit. I don't know where she hides until they come out and get caught. And then she jumps out. And she's big. And she's got a pretty awesome pattern on her back. And she's like, arr, 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 wrap you up, you little money fly. You're my dinner. And then she eats them. <laughs> Oh my god, I have to show you something really funny. Okay, check this out. Uh, I was at uh, Safeway, you know, sh grocery shopping. And uh, they have, you know how they have their little Halloween section? Yep, there she goes, see? <laughs> okay, she's ready. And, uh, I, I found this sign that I... That I, I saw this sign. Oh, stop it. I saw this sign that they had in their Halloween section. And so I bought it. And it's, it's, you know, this, it's right here. The 
witch's lair. Enter if you dare, right? Okay, but here's what's funny. They misspelled witches. <laughs> it was W-I-T-C-H-E-S with an apostrophe after the S. It's like, witches is us. <laughs> Oh, this is so sad. Like, like, we got to this point where it's like this. So I had to correct it. And they had to spell check it and correct it with some white out and some black enamel. <laughs> oh, and oh, oh no. And here's the new, you know, because after, at every full moon, here's some witchy woo woo for you. At every full moon, you uh, get some rosemary and you make it into a little wreath and you hang it above your door. And then people who have ill intentions cannot come through your door, amongst other things that I have around my door. <laughs> and and then at the end of every month, you burn your little wreath and you get a new one. And you keep doing that. And that's what happens. Because uh, Rosemary is, is uh, the protector of single women and warriors alike. All right, Sadie, we're going outside now. Okay, don't be mad at me no more. All right. Okay, here we go. All right. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Yay, Santa! Yay, Santa! <laughs> you good, okay? You like it? You like it? <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, okay. All right. Oh, 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 oh! Click. <laughs>